When life gives you lemons, make a lemonade. A great expression. However, as a downstream user you expect to get what you ordered. The reality is, you do not always know what's in the mix, since 100% compositions are seldom provided. This is just one of many value chain challenges of downstream users. Therefore, I'm happy to discuss these challenges also in relation to sustainability with Julius Waller of EPA and Jirapat Tanzandos of Carry Ingredients, who last minute had to be in Indonesia for a business meeting. Gentlemen, time to get the creative juices flowing. Jira, what are the most significant sustainability challenges you face in your downstream user value chain? Okay, thank you for the question. Yep, we have the big challenge for sure, as many companies and everybody in this planet. Climate change has the big impact to everyone on this planet. But for us as a company, because we are the food ingredients, so we rely on the supply of the food product and also from the farmers. And when the climate change happens, Actually, the farming business or the agricultural business are the first one that have the biggest impact. Because our company, we believe that we want to create what we call sustainable nutrition. So we want to get the ingredients from the farms or from the company that do it sustainably. So this is the challenge that we have seen at the moment. How can we find the company or from the farms that working with the um, sustainability mindset and this is the challenge that we you know we are working on it now just to ensure that we can secure the value chain and ensure that we can deliver the sustainable nutrition to our customers okay thank you jira julius do you recognize these challenges based on your massive experience well <clears throat> massive is a big word uh, i would say what is massive is the communication challenge that people like jira face uh, and others. I think we were just in a conference uh, and uh, there was the chap from Merck saying he had 90,000 changes per day uh, on the data that he was communicating up and down his supply chain. So this really requires a different kind of thinking, an exponential approach to communication. Uh, some people criticize the system saying uh, sustainability becomes almost a, an accounting or a reporting system. But like Jira said, what you want to do is to communicate to your customers that you are sustainable and that they are making sustainable choices. And for this, transparency and communication is essential. But uh, for sure, it gets complicated. Huh? Uh, and uh, if there's anything massive about it, it's the complexity. Okay. Jira, can you describe a recent challenge that you faced in the value chain and how you addressed it? And uh, was durian diplomacy needed there? No, actually, we don't need a durian diplomacy because durian is like either love or hate, you know. Um, the latest challenge that we have, I think, is coming with the, the fact that um, sustainability has become like, you know, the requirement for every company. And we see that with the regulation change, you know, we have seen more of the demanding in terms of the data reporting and also the transparency. So the challenge we have is that, you know, how can we keep up or keep up with all the requirements and then adapt our company way of working also within the whole value chain, not only our company, but the whole value chain to the requirements of the new regulations or the new requirements from the customers. Okay. Can you provide an example of a successful initiative you have implemented to address sustainability in your value chain? Okay, there are, there are a few, but if I want to name one, again, you know, it's the whole value chain, right? And the whole value chain is mean that a lot of people working in this value chain. How can we bring everyone to work on the same direction? Starting from our company, we have many functions like engineering, manufacturing, procurement, quality, or, uh, you know, working in a different, um, you know, uh, functions but we want them to walk in the same direction to toward the sustainability so what we did in the company we created the um, initiative called small x matter it's about you know bring everyone to be on the same journey to make the impact on the sustainability so this program is actually create the sustainability awareness we want to encourage we actually educate everyone in the company every functions 
about the sustainability and we asked them to provide the ideas you know what can they make the impact or the change um, to help reduce the, the footprints of our companies and this one actually create um, the awareness for everyone in the organization that oh now the sustainability is become you know one of the topic that it's not only like you know um, financial demanding or you know whatever the news or the NGO demanding it's actually we have to do not for our company but actually for our planet yep and that's the initiative we create to create awareness and bring everyone to, um, to work on this journey together okay interesting and how do you assess the impact of regulatory changes uh, on your position as carry in the value chain <clears throat> Okay, um, in our company, we we actually recently create what we call the sustainability impact office. We never have this one in the past, but because you know now with the CSRD coming, with the new regulations coming, we know that um, we cannot work with the you know a guy like me in in Asia. We need to have cross functional working together. So at a global level, they create what they call sustainability impact office. And this one is the department that combine all the functions working all together so that we can access um, the new regulations, the new requirements. So when they have the new regulations coming, then we assess, you know, with the cross-functional, and then we see that what we have to, to follow, what we have to do in our company. So we leverage the expertise from all the functions all together. Okay, talking about leveraging expertise, Julius, can you provide some trends and best practices you witness when interacting with industry on these th topics? I think the challenge for industry uh, is that there are so many requirements being put forward in different ways regarding sustainability uh, that not only is it hard to implement, but uh, hard for the consumer to then find their way uh, into understanding all of these different uh, communications. Uh, and uh, I think there's a very positive role uh, that is played both at international level by organizations but also trade associations in creating templates and formats which uh, I would say consolidate this data in a way that makes sense so that you have uh, a comparison that is reasonable and apples and apples are, are, uh, are, are considered. Uh, obviously also system integrators uh, uh, offer these kind of uh, solutions uh, and we have to go this way because this volume of data requirements that it's going to come is just uh, will just be increasing. Sustainability, like I said, it's, it's an accounting exercise as much uh, as an exercise in saving the planet. Yeah. Hey, many regulatory changes are keeping popping up, basically. Yeah? How can industry prepare themselves for this? You know, <laughs> that this sounds stupid. It's like you're back in school. Uh, it's homework. Uh, homework uh, is, is, is really key. Uh, if you look Last uh, April, what is it, 22nd of April, the uh, EU uh, essential use concept uh, was presented. And uh, because there are now so many chemicals that are deemed to have hazardous properties, almost everybody is affected one way or another by their existence. So it becomes important to check, you know, would I uh, be derogated under the essential use concept? It's not a difficult exercise in a way because it's like a checklist. Uh, and if you go through your portfolio and think, okay, you know, which ones might I be able to put there and cross them against uh, whatever hazardous chemicals you feel obliged to use, because of course uh, we'd like to substitute them rather than, uh, uh, than use them, uh, you'll be better prepared for the moment when you'll be called to uh, explain why you think that uh, your, what is it, article, substance or whatever, or mixture uh, should, uh, should remain on, on the market. And uh, that is, I think, the only failure that industry sometimes has, is that they're too reactive. Uh, they react only the moment they're called out on something, rather than doing a, a, a good homework preparation. So they should be proactive, basically. Absolutely. One of the recently proposed changes is the EU POP regulation. Can you explain how these changes will affect the value chain? So uh, this, uh, it's a little bit of a hobby horse of mine since I picked up on this. As you know, I had to insist with you that we talk about it. Uh, but uh, the POPs regulation, uh, in a way, is a very old regulation now. And everybody sort of has it here now. We've implemented this, we're, we're, we're on top of it. And the, the dirty dozen, as they're called, there's actually 26 uh, chemicals uh, on there. We've got that under control. However, uh, the limit values which were set were still relatively high. 
and this is going to change. And these proposals are literally on the table right now. It, it's the end of a 10-year process that they're coming in, but we're going to move down by a factor anywhere from between 10 to 100 in the limit values. And what people forget is that the POPs regulation says, if you do not meet these limit values, you cannot place your substance, your mixture, or your article on the market. And uh, your article will also deem to be non-recyclable. A lot of sustainability rules now require that you can only place recyclable articles on the market. So this is really going to impact the, the supply chain. And uh, I'm concerned there is a, a lack of awareness on that. Okay, without comparing apples and oranges, what are the common challenges for both PCBs and pigments? Yeah, so it's, it's funny you should mention orange because, you know, we, we, we are both Dutch and so orange is important uh, <laughs> to us. Uh, but uh, uh, in pigments, uh, if you have poor process control, you are likely to generate uh, PCBs. And funny enough, uh, there are two colors in which this happens in particular, purple and orange. <laughs> So, uh, if you've got some orange product, and there was a gentleman walking around uh, yesterday with a very orange pants, uh, these uh, PCBs, um, you know, they can be generated in any pigment you order from any place. Now, you order it in Europe or United States or Japan or other highly qualified manufacturers, you'll see you're fine uh, with the limits and probably you'll be below the new lower limits that, that Europe has installed. However, there's a lot of subcontracting going on in Asia. It's, it's a big area where things are routinely subcontracted uh, around for cheaper byproducts. And uh, you may find that you are over the limit uh, uh, on those. And that is, I think, where uh, the, the, the challenge lies. I, I name pigments only because they're ubiquitous. People forget about them. You know, Just looking around all these colors we have around the table, your tie, my shirt, uh, the background at Jiri's uh, place, uh, pigments are absolutely everywhere. And so, uh, you know, Pops is going to come back to haunt us on that one. Okay, hold on to that one. Jira, how do you ensure transparency and traceability in your downstream value chain? Uh, yes, that's the interesting one. <clears throat> I think we need to start off with, you know, exactly understand, you know, what are the requirements in terms of the uh, transparency and traceability, because Sometimes if we, you know, start off with um, guessing or not to really understanding, then it's going to create the, 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 you know, not, not the, the right uh, impact that we can make. So you need to understand what are the ask, um, what are the requirements. If you cannot, you know, understand by yourself, by your team, then get the external um, advisory to come and help. And then um, second, like for my, for my company, we need to establish a standard procedure in terms of the data gathering, reporting, and also um, tracing. So we need to have the standard because we have more than 130 manufacturing you know, across the globe, also hundreds of, of vendors. So we need to ensure that everyone operates on the same standard. So we need to have the document to create the standard procedure. Then it's down to the, um, the training and educating um, every unit in the organization that you know, we need to have the same understanding and after that, after you train them, you need to go back and do the follow up check with them that every single person understand the same thing or not. I mean, in my case, you know, after we train them, you know, sometimes they have the different um, understanding. So when they do the data collection or reporting, I mean, we cannot trace back. So we need to go back and check with them. And last but not least, the company need to do the like um, frequently check or internal audit, I would say just to ensure that, you know, the data that we collect and reporting, um, they are reporting correctly and then we can check it back, you know, before we need to do in, in the company first before the others come and check uh, for us. Yep, that's how we do it. Okay, thank you very much. Sounds very complex. Julius, how can companies ensure transparency and traceability when it's so complex? Yeah, uh, when I hear uh, uh, politicians and sometimes regulators speak about uh, compliance, uh, they always make it uh, sound, oh, but th this is easy for you. Uh, you know these things. Uh, and uh, that reminds me of the, the joke that, you know, we do not do these things because they are easy, but because we thought <laughs> they were easy. 
Uh, and I think Jira has actually given an excellent explanation of, of, of how you sh should approach it. But first, the recognition of this complexity is quite important. And unfortunately, it also means you have to start cutting out a lot of the manual intervention that used to be human nature. You know, we will find some way to fix things. I grew up in Brazil. There is a famous word in Brazil, da um jeito. Uh, this means a solution for everything. You come up with a problem, ah, da um jeito. We'll, we'll, we'll find a way, a way to solve it. This will not work uh, in the future. And I think uh, data integration and, and, and big data requires you to have systems which actually monitor what goes wrong, and then you fix the primary data, and you do not fix in the middle anymore. Because if you try to do that, you will be unable to follow. Okay. Jira, by working together, upstream and downstream players <laughs> can create a more resilient, responsive, and sustainable value chain that benefits all stakeholders involved. What kind of lessons learned can you share on this? Um, well, we have, we have the ask from our customer and this and one of the examples that, you know, um, they, our customer, you know, want to have the product that have the less impact, let me, let's say less carbon or, you know, um, less impact to the environment. And that the ask um, from the customers. So we need to work with an organization to, to find, you know, what can we do. And in that case, um, we, they actually want to reduce the, the sugar level. So we need to work, you know, what can we propose to them. Um, and, and, and that um, we, what we learn is that, you know, we first need to understand what exactly the, the, the impact of um, the customer product and what as a company we can offer to them. Yep. So I think that one of the, the, the lesson that, that we learned as a company that we need to really adapt to, to the ask from, from the customers, which is um, quite demanding nowadays in terms of the um, sustainable impact. Yep. Okay, Julius, what are your lessons learned from the interaction between the various key stakeholders in a value chain? I, I think the, uh, uh, the, the key thing you learn uh, is that if you use this process correctly, you actually become wiser yourself about your own processes and your own systems. Uh, and uh, you can make a better product. Uh, I mean, Jira referred to, you know, what the consumer would want. But in fact, yep. such processes also allow you to look at your own system. Sometimes you think, what? why are we doing this? Uh, and then it's a question like, well, uh, we've always done it like that. And my predecessor said that this is the way we did it. And nobody has remembered why uh, that was never called into question. And that's, I think, the benefit of, of, of these supply chain communications. Uh, I've often heard sometimes suppliers say, you know, it's been years since I've been telling him, please change. But you know there was no desire to do so unless until it was laid bare in uh, in these process. So I think that's a, a perhaps underestimated benefit of these uh, uh, these complex complexities. You called it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jira, you already mentioned consumer demand. Eh? How mm -hmm. does consumer demand for sustainable products impact your downstream value chain management? Oh, okay. Uh, Yep, we have some impact for sure, because first of all, I think like Julius mentioned a bit on that one that, you know, we are so complex and, you know, we actually have done the way we did for a long time without knowing why. So I think it's about the mindset change that how can we bring everyone in the organization to, to understand, you know, like why, why we need to, to, do, um, to do this way, like change the way we produce the product. For example, we probably used to, um, use a lot of water, um, use the certain ingredients that is might not be um, you know, sustainable um, for the farming. So it's about a mindset change, you know, that um, we need to, to change and understanding that, oh, now we need to understand why and what we can do to actually um, have more sustainable uh, products. Julius, how do you perceive industry's commitment? And can you share what you think industry needs to do to meet society's sustainability expectations? Look, th th there's no single answer uh, to that because uh, you know industry is a big place. Uh, we have a gentleman from a food company uh, here, but I think <laughs> in the room there are, uh, there are specialty chemical suppliers, there are uh, uh, massive uh, uh, global chemical uh, supply companies. I think uh, it's a realization that you need to each for yourself decide how are am I going to meet society's aims for for the sustainability. And the interesting thing at places like Chemcon is that you realize 
this drive is, is not some hobby horse of just one continent. It is actually global. It expresses itself sometimes in different ways. Uh, but from China to the United States to uh, Southeast Asia uh, or, or Latin America, you are going to be confronted uh, uh, with, with these questions. Yeah. Uh, carry ingredients also is, so Jira, no ifs, no buts, no coconuts. What are Carrie's key commitments in relation to sustainability in your value chain? Um, okay, so we actually want to be the customer value partner and create the world of the sustainable nutrition. And that is what our aim for. And we want to deliver or reach to more than 2 billion people to deliver the sustainable nutrition to them. To do that, um, we need to work the whole value chain from the supplier, you know, um, how can they reduce the, the carbon emission? How can they ensure that, you know, they do the sustainable farming, for example, come to our factories, we need to reduce the use of the um, energy, water, food waste, um, reduce the emission of carbon. Also downstream, you know, to the customer, we need to work with the understanding the customer need and provide a solution for them because customer and consumer are demanding for the sustainable products nowadays. Yep. Okay, clear. Uh, final question um, for you both, mm -hmm. Jira and Julius. What are your personal dragon fruit dreams for implementing more sustainability in your businesses? Well, do you want to go first, Jira, or shall I? <laughs> I let you go first. Oh, thank I you, agree. yes. Um, you know, <laughs> the dragon fruit is all uh, about prosperity. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I love the work that I do, uh, but I'm also lazy. And I would love to see uh, the concepts like sustainable by design would be truly implemented by the industries we're in and that we're not running after the facts when they're called out on something and have to, and we then have to explain it away and find some excuse to get some additional deadline for them to, to comply to it. I think if this concept of uh, sustainability uh, were to be implemented across the supply chain from the start, in a way much that the JIRA talks about it, uh, then it would be much easier that when the moment comes, if you need the authorities to give you some flexibility for whatever reason, it's much easier to justify if sustainable by design is in there. Uh, and uh, that would be uh, my dragon uh, fruit dream. And Jira, what is your personal dragon fruit dream? <laughs> okay. Um, my dream is that everyone in the organization and also in the value chain have the same understanding about why we have to um, work on a sustainability to reduce the impact that we create to our planet. If everyone have the same understanding and have the, you know, want to do for it, then it's going to be underlying in everything that they do without me going to tell them that you need to do this way, but it's coming from themselves. And if we can do that, I believe that, you know, um, we will reduce many like discussion that we spend, um, you know, negotiating why we need to do this way because it's coming from them. It's coming from that they understood that, oh, we have to do it because we only have one planet, right? If we don't do it today, how are we gonna live? how our next generation is going to live. We want to leave our planet in the, in the place, you know, where the next generations can live the way that, you know, we enjoy it. And that's my dream. Okay, wonderful dream. Jira and Julius, thank you for providing us with a taste of sustainability and value chain challenges of downstream users. Quite a mix of challenges and solutions. So I guess we can conclude today's juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs>